So you are going to interview me today. <laughs> right, yeah. I don't know whether we'll hear an echo or not because I, yeah. Yeah, Jadi, everybody asking whether the career talk is on or not. Yeah, so yeah. today. Um, yeah, but you tell them the turtles are slower. You tell them that. The turtles are slower. <laughs> yeah, you're going to wait for The turtles are not only slower, but they take 20 years to mature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, very good evening uh, for those who are online and live. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Chen, which everybody knows as Dr. Pelf. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the kids and the wife is on the way to Ampang Putri to get their test. Um, but regardless, um, we're all good. Um, there's no symptoms. Uh, I can taste food very well. Uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm more leaving the stove burn rather than anything else. <laughs> but um so um i think i think everybody knows you uh for the matter because it's uh, sea turtle week uh everybody who who knows about turtles know about you uh maybe if you don't mind um just introducing yourself um and tell them what you do as a conserv conservationist um and what you do with the turtle Conservation Society of Malaysia. Uh, you can take your time and take five ten minutes to say I'll be back. Yeah. I thought you were gonna. You so you were supposed to ask me questions. Yeah, yeah. So, well, are so, we are we live now? Yeah, we are live already. So um. Okay. <laughs> uh, introduce yourself. Uh, tell us what uh, conservationist at Total Conservation Society does. Tell us about your projects in Kemaman, and maybe do an introduction of uh what Sea Turtle week or sea turtle day is today right yes yes well uh good evening um boys and girls <laughs> um i can't see you so i don't actually know how many uh, uh how big our audience is but um my name is pelf um i i co-founded turtle conservation society of malaysia in 2011 uh, in, in short we call ourselves tcs Okay, so we are going to go by TCS. It's easier to remember. Uh, so I co-founded the organization, the NGO, and I'm currently serving as its uh, executive director. Um, so what TCS uh, basically does is to protect and conserve uh, freshwater turtles from being uh, critically endangered. Okay, so we try to help save them from being becoming extinct. Okay, and how do we do this? We do this through uh, research and conservation projects. Uh, we do uh, educational programs. We used to do educational programs. We used to go to schools and uh, play with kids. And then uh, we also have a public uh, awareness campaign. And uh, yeah, right. And yeah, just very recently, we initiated um, a a community empowerment program with the local uh, women in the kampong. So we, we do all these activities, but with one goal in mind, which is to uh, save terrapins, freshwater turtles from becoming extinct. Okay, so it is, uh, I do a lot of things. I wear uh, quite a few hats, uh, sometimes at the same time, sometimes uh, one after another. Um, and uh, for anybody who wants to come and join us, for example, as a, a student intern, you know, that the timing when you come join us will determine the kind of work that you do. Because uh, throughout the whole year, I do different things uh, in different seasons. For example, um, nearing Chinese New Year uh, in February and March, uh, that's when the freshwater turtles will come up to the riverbank to lay eggs to nest. So then we'll be busy with collecting terrapin eggs, uh, incubating them and ensuring that they hatch. And then uh, in May, May, June, May, June, uh, terrapin hatchlings will begin to emerge. So that's a lot of work too, you know, uh, checking the nest and uh, ensuring that uh, all terrapins are documented. And then uh, typically in July, August, we will plan for our annual terrapin release. You may have heard about the terrapin releases uh, previously. So we do that once a year to release uh, the terrapins into the river. 
And then we typically don't do much hands-on work uh, in the end, at the end of the year. It's mostly uh, paperwork, catching up with uh, grant applications, uh, writing reports for those projects that we have received funding for, uh, looking for recruiting new interns for the next season. Yeah, so different times of the year, we do different things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think we just want an excuse to celebrate, right? <laughs> yeah, so uh, World Turtle Day, um, it was uh, started by uh, an American, you know, and uh, we celebrate World Turtle Day too. Last year, we celebrated World Turtle Day for weeks and we called it the Buka Puasa, Buka Puasa Open House because, you know, it, it clashed with Hari Raya as well until uh, we celebrate World Sea Turtle Day. And I think it's because there are many different types of turtles. For example, we have sea turtles that live in the sea. Uh, some people call them the marine turtles. Uh, in Malay, we call them penyu. And then we also have many different species of freshwater turtles. The, your terrapins, you know, those that live in the lakes, in ponds, in rivers, in the drains outside your house. These are all freshwater turtles. More than 360 species of them. And then we also have uh, the kura kura, the tortoises, the terrestrial ones. So I think we just want to celebrate them. <laughs> they being the, the most um, endangered group of animals in, you know, the, uh, in, in, in the grand scheme of things. Kan? So we want to celebrate them. So that's why we have uh, World Turtle Day, which is celebrated in May. And today we celebrate World Sea Turtle Day. Right, yes. I have no idea how many sea turtles are they. Species, right. Uh, we have seven. <laughs> we have seven. We have uh, seven species of sea turtles that roam the oceans in the whole world. But out of these seven species, we have four that come to Malaysia to lay eggs. So we don't, we don't call them native sea turtles. We don't call them our sea turtles. Because sea turtles are a shared resource. You know, they, they may come to uh, Pulau Redang to lay eggs okay, in Redang Island, but uh, they look for food elsewhere, maybe in the Philippines. And then they look for a mate, a partner, somewhere else, you know, maybe in, uh, I don't know, uh, India somewhere. But the reason we call them a uh, shared resource is because they are found in many different countries. We just happen to host them when they lay eggs. So that's why we say four species of sea turtles come to Malaysia to lay eggs. <laughs> I'm limping the yeah the leather bag. Yep, correct. Global citizens, yes. right? Global, Global citizens, citizens. Yeah. yes. Um, I I think um, you you started um, your research in uh, UMT, right? Uh, it's it's currently now known. I mean, it used to be known as Kustem, and then now it's UMT. I think they changed name again, right? Maybe uh, uh or is it Kustem? Okay. Um if you don't mind, maybe um you can um let us know what you studied until the time where you took your PhD in zoology. And maybe you can just explain to the audience um what it takes to to I know I know it's a, a very long <laughs> road. Uh, but maybe uh, just briefly explain to them um, where you came from and, and how you got to where you are today. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, 
So when I received the offer letter to do my uh, bachelor's degree in marine biology, uh, I was enrolled in a university called the KUT, College University Trangganu, which was essentially UPMT, University Putra Malaysia, Trangganu. <laughs> and then when I graduated in 2004, uh, the university became KUSEM. <laughs> College, <laughs> College University Science and Technology, Malaysia. And then um, I stayed on to do a master's on uh, biodiversity and conservation. It's a glamorous title, but essentially what I was doing was cleaning up after terrapins and changing water every day, feeding them and then catch them okay. up and we weigh and measure, measure them every, every day, day for, for three months. months. Because, because I was, I was doing, doing a growth study. study. So, so I needed, I needed at least three months, months like, you know, to, to see significant, significant growth on uh, slow uh, uh, maturing uh, animals uh, like uh, uh, river terrapins. These are river terrapins, right? The yeah, these are freshwater turtles, 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 the river terrapins. What's the right. scientific name again? Is it Batagor? Uh, yeah, yeah, it, it is called the Batagor Aftinis. Okay, yeah, I can never pronounce it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and then, then uh, from there, there I, I did my master's. Um, when, when I graduated um, with, with my master's, uh, the, university the university became UMT. <laughs> university <laughs> Malaysia <laughs> Trangganu, same, same place, but three, but three different, different names. names <laughs> when I there. Wow, three degrees, not bad. <laughs> I know, <it's> not <laughs> and then um. And, and then, then I stayed on, and I, I stayed on, and uh, I was recruited as a research assistant with the Sea Turtle Research Unit project. Uh, they have a very popular and very uh, uh, selling like hot cake volunteer program at Pulau Redang. So I was a research assistant for a couple of years. And then I got a scholarship from CIMB Foundation to do my PhD in UKM. And the... And the uh, PhD is in uh, zoology, yeah. which has nothing to do with uh, river therapies or. Uh, well, well, it's just a fancy title, title because, because uh, uh, my project was uh, studying the nesting uh, activity, activity, nesting, nesting habits of the river therapies. So the, the, the degree, degree title, title is just a fancy title. title. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I, I had a, a, I would say, say I had a pretty uh, unconventional path. path. I, I took a pretty unconventional path to getting my degrees. Um, the downside of it is that I always, almost always never had lab mates. You know, when you work in, uh, uh, when, when you do your further your degrees in a university, usually you pick your, uh, your, your supervisor, you pick a project that you uh, as. Uh, envision yourself doing or spending more time learning about a particular subject and then you have lab mates you know people who you work with every day in the lab you know people you can borrow equipment from notes from yeah so uh, in my line of study I never had that I never had a, a lab mate I never had a lab uh, so I didn't have um, peers uh, so it was tough yeah is it is it because uh, nobody liked to clean the tanks <laughs> I don't know if uh, people, whether they like to clean tanks, but uh, I don't know. I just feel like um, the turtles in Malaysia, they are not getting a lot of attention, which is very sayang because uh, there is a lot of potential here. I can see there is a lot of potential. And uh, freshwater turtles in the country, they are so understudied. It's like... I don't, I don't even call myself an expert because I dare not call myself an expert. There's so much that we do not know about freshwater turtles. And what that means is that uh, everybody's listening here. <laughs> if you are kids, you know, you should just grow up and come study turtles with me. Come save turtles. <laughs> or, you know what we really need? We need to study them so that we understand them more, so that we are able to help them thrive in their uh, natural habitat. Not, not just survive, we want them to thrive. So, yeah, we are lacking uh, human resource in that department. Yeah. <laughs> um, there, there's, a, there's a comment by uh, Lin, Lin saying, uh, Tuntung. Tuntung. Yeah, Tuntung. Yeah. Yeah. Tuntung yeah. 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 Maybe you want to yeah. like, give a brief uh, background <laughs> on why the name and, and how the name came about. Yeah, yeah, sure. So these guys, um, the, the freshwater turtles that I work with, um, they are also called River Terrapin. River Terrapin in Malay is called Tuntung Sungai because they live in the river. 
okay, all their life. They cannot go out to the sea. Uh, in other words, they cannot tolerate high salinity. Brackish water, okay. Uh, about 15, 16 parts per thousand, okay, but they cannot go into the sea. So that's why they are called the river, uh, Tuntung Sungai, river terrapin. And um, where they got their Malay name is very interesting. So these females, uh, they will come onto a nesting bank. Uh, a nesting bank is essentially a sandbar in the river. And you can only find sandbars in large rivers, not small, tiny, narrow, black water rivers. No, not that kind. It's the large ones with um, the, the, the water is usually tetare in color, that kind of, of river. So uh, in these rivers, we have large sandbanks and the terrapins will emerge and they will crawl up to the sandbank to lay their eggs. So just like sea turtles, they will dig a body pit so that they can sit in it comfortably and then they start to lay their eggs. So when they're done, they will use their hind legs, the two back legs, to cover the egg chamber, right? So when they cover, cover, cover the egg chamber to protect their eggs, you know, from people, from human beings. So they cover the egg chambers. It's called the two-legged pest. <laughs> and then to compact the sand, what they do is they lift their body and then they let go. So they do this thumping sound. Tung, 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 tung. So each time they make this thumping sound, it is a signal to us that they are done laying eggs and that they are now compacting the sand. So I guess that's where the local villagers call this, you know, got this uh, idea of calling these things tuntung, these turtles tuntung, because they make that tung tung sound. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, um, I think some of them uh, mentioned that uh, it was a great trip that they had. Uh, Lynn obviously had a great trip. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what trip she's mentioning and referring to. Discovery <laughs> trip. Which one? Oh, discovery, discovery trip. trip. Was it the yeah. two days or the, the three? The I, two? I don't remember. Oh, one but day multiple one. days. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Really, I don't think you get to experience much, much in the one day trip. trip. Yeah. yeah, I wonder which it's one she went two, for. Two day or the three day yeah. trip. Yeah. Uh, sister Alia said we need more turtle ambassadors, and then she she has uh, three cute turtle icons. So I'm not sure whether she <laughs> needs ambassadors in terms of turtles or she needs more of you. Yeah, but anyway, um, yeah. So um, um, someone just mentioned it was an interesting history of of the name. I think um the the the, the next leading question was uh, um. Um, I, I, I'm trying to pull up some videos, but my computer is lagging. Uh, but I'll try to pull up some videos uh, of, of Tontong's laying uh, eggs, uh, if, if I can find some on the, on the TCS uh, web, website and YouTube. Um, maybe if you can um, just briefly tell us about uh, why they call you Mac Tontong and uh, the gang Tontong in Kemaman. Why they call me Mac Tontong? I think it is a form of endearment, you know. Um, well, they call each other Mac anyway in the kampong, you know, it's like Mem. So, uh, you know, when somebody's name is uh, Dola, okay, so so naturally Dola's wife would be Mac Dola, Dola's wife, okay? So they call each other that anyway. So, um, so when I got to the kampong, they, they needed a name to call me. So instead of calling me Chen, they just call me Mac. La. And then Mac was like, uh, Mac upper because usually your name is tied to your husband's name. So then they started calling me Mac Tuntung to differentiate me from the other Macs in the kampong. <laughs> so that was how I got my name. <laughs> Not that I married the, the therapine. Maybe in a way, <laughs> I did marry the therapine. Uh, but then... That, that, that was how the name came out. Like, and these days, uh, a lot, lot of, of them still call me Mac. Mac. Yeah, not Mac Tuntong, but a lot of them call me Mac. <laughs> yeah, so um, there's also a gang Tuntong, right? Right, there is a gang, gang Tuntong. Well, they call themselves the gang Tuntong. Uh, and, and these are local villagers who who first uh, agreed to work with us in the conservation project. Uh, because, you know, they were collecting these terrapin eggs as food. For many years, they were doing this. You know, they were collecting terrapin eggs uh, for consumption um, until we came along. That was in 2011. And then we, uh, we asked them whether they were interested to join our conservation project. Uh, we, they, we, we made it very clear that it wasn't a, a getting-rich-quick scheme <laughs> because we were an NGO. 
And uh, then we asked them, uh, would you like to join us to um, help save these terrapins? So instead of collecting these terrapins for food, you will be collecting these terrapins for us for incubation. So the first five men from the local village who said yes to this proposal, uh, then they went ahead and called themselves the Gang Tuntung, the Terrapin Guardians. So when we started the project in 2011, we had five uh, men who called themselves the Gang Tuntung, and we were protecting one uh, terrapin nesting bank in the Kemaman River. Uh, this year, after 10, 11 years of operation, we have 14, 14 uh, members of the Gang Tuntung uh, patrolling four river banks in the river. So we are, uh, uh, we are, have, we are maintaining a presence on more uh, river banks. And these river banks are all side by side? Are they like side by side oh. or they are all across uh. the Maman River? Oh, no, 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 no. They, they are, are along a same stretch of the river, not, 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 not side by side, but adjacent. So what these guys, uh, these therapy, therapy guardians, the gang to know what they do is that uh, every evening, uh, I think the past Margaret, the past Isha, they will take their boat. Some, some will need boat, some do not need boat. They just take the motorbike uh, to the river bank and uh, they will stay there the whole night and then they come back uh, home or they send the eggs to the hatchery tomorrow morning, uh, lepas subuh. Usually around 7 a.m. Yeah, so um, amazing stuff. Uh, I haven't actually caught up with you. Um, so the, the plus, three, uh, plus three riverbanks, have they been, been positive? Have they been uh, fruitful in the last February? It is um, it, it's a mixed bag. It's a mixed bag. Some fun times, we have this one bank that gives you more eggs and then the other bank no eggs. <laughs> Sometimes we have, uh, and there was one nesting bank that before it appeared in our GPS and location, uh, it wasn't there. It was submerged all this while. Oh, really? And then, yeah. Wow. And then after one monsoon, one big flood, uh, and then the water receded much. Lah. And then this particular river bank became a, a river bank. <laughs> It's amazing that uh, because the Kemaman River is actually meandering and it's about 100 kilometers long. 150, and, I think. Yeah. Last time I measured. 50 measure, or 100? Mm -hmm. hmm? 150. Oh, 150, yeah, okay. Ah, well, from the very Ulu la, to the uh, uh, estuary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and there's about, I think you mentioned 15 river banks, right? Oh, they are actually, yeah, the, at, at that time when I was. Uh, counting 15 but I think we are down to only a handful now and then we had one that just came up <laughs> yes <laughs> yes and then we had a new one who knew can we can have new riverbanks <laughs> amazing um Lynn was uh with the three days two nights I'm not sure which uh -huh. one um it's probably the one that goes all very, the way to very recent the one uh, uh she was here and Sarini was here uh, sorry, recent, don't know which recent. one which one was that, but is it the one that goes all the way to Trenganu and and uh, the MNS? Oh, uh, no, no. no. Uh, but we went to uh, Tanah Mangrove with uh, Hafiz. Tanah Poko Bakau with Hafiz. Ah, okay, okay. The one with the boys one side, girls one side. The dorm. Uh, we, no, that one is the Eco Care dorm. Okay, then it's a total oh, different Hafiz, trip. Hafiz is Chirating, Chirating. Ah, Chirating, Hafiz Chirating, okay, okay. Ah, right, okay. and then we also did the river uh, cruise. And okay. uh, typically, on a typical river cruise, we will be able to see uh, a mangrove snake, you know, a family of otters. Yeah. Yeah. monkeys and... Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. And uh, fiddler crabs. So those, those were the things that we were able to host and conduct pre-COVID. And um, since, since the pandemic has started about one and a half years ago, uh, we haven't been able to host um, uh, groups, uh, families or students. We haven't been able to host families or students on our uh, weekly trips or daily trips or uh, the two-day, one-night or the three-day, two-night trips. So that has... Um, significantly affected our uh, annual revenue. So in a way, we are also still learning to adjust, you know, to a smaller operation because we are not raising as much funds as we used to last year or the year before. 
you guys are doing some uh, virtual tours uh, for online visitors to your assets as well, right? Maybe you can right. explain yeah. on that. Yeah, so <laughs> virtual tour was born out of necessity, just like many other things. <laughs> um, so we couldn't host any more student groups, but I thought eh, we could take the place to you or you could watch us from the comfort of your home, you know, just in front of a laptop. But of course, we still charge you, right? <laughs> so what we do is uh, during our virtual tour, it is a one hour tour. We will take you to our River Therapy and Conservation Center in Kemaman and then we will show you the conservation project that we are doing. Uh, we will be showing you the hatchery, a uh, short video. We will talk about the different types of turtles because a lot of people still have this idea that when I say turtles, I am referring to sea turtles. But you know, there are a lot of other types of turtles, right? And then we will take you, uh, the audience, into our smallish, uh, humble little uh, gallery, mini turtle gallery, which we are housing about nine species of turtles. We will talk about the, exo the skeletons of the turtles. We will talk about barnacles. Uh, we will talk about uh, backbones, turtles, that they, they grow with their shell. Uh, we will show some uh, specimens, dates wet and dry specimen and then at the end of one hour we will take questions from uh, our guests so we have been hosting a few uh, public uh, virtual tours typically on a saturday or a sunday and usually uh, in the morning and we have also been um, hosting uh, private tours for uh, uh, schools as well as kindergartens yeah so the private tours um uh, are for larger groups, uh, at least 30 participants. And uh, if, if the kids are all with their friends, so they're familiar with uh, each other. So, you know, it, it's easier to warm everybody up because they already know each other. Yeah, so we have the public tours and then we have the private uh, uh, group tours. How much are the private and the, or your rates different for different oh. people? Uh, di different because uh, the private groups are larger, uh, more people, right? Uh, so the public tour, we take uh, 20 ringgit uh, per person, which is essentially per household, because you all watch us together uh, at home, so I, I don't care, I don't mind. Um, but for groups with a minimum uh, number of participants of 30, uh, we charge 10 per per child, per household. <laughs> yeah, okay. But then we will need 30 packs lah, in the private group. Okay. That's good to know. Um, we have a question from Yisen. What's the route to get accepted for a marine science course? Uh, maybe if you fail your maths and... <laughs> I'm getting very serious here. To be very honest, that wasn't my choice. Okay, I did not apply to do marine science. I did not apply to do marine biology in the university. And when I was offered to do marine biology, I actually cried because I didn't want to go to Trangganu because I, because I couldn't swim, because uh, that wasn't in any of my five choices. You know, back then we had only five choices. Now you have many. Really? But, you're um, saying you didn't want to be where you are today? <laughs> no, okay. no. Yeah, yeah. I, I cried, and uh, but then you know what? We couldn't afford private education, so I had to go, right? So I went. So I, I went to uh, KUT, College University, Dranganu, and then I told myself, you know what? Just, just do one semester of this marine biology and see what it is. And uh, then I heard from friends, new friends, that um, we could switch courses after one semester. So I said, okay, never mind, let's just do this one semester. And then I will switch to something that is something that was more acceptable at that time. Uh, I thought maybe do food science. But who knows, Gan? After one semester of studying marine biology, I didn't want to switch <laughs> because I felt that we were doing really interesting subjects. Uh, we, we were the fresh guinea pigs. I was the second batch of the marine biology program in UMT. Uh, but we were doing a lot of interesting uh, subjects, uh, very fresh, you know, things that not people, not many people uh, at that time had even thought about. So then I decided not to switch. Lah. So then I stayed on until now. I do not have advice for you 
uh, on how to get into the program. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I, I found, this is, this is true. Uh. One thing I found when we were classmates, you know, there were 20 of us only because I was mentioning we were the guinea pigs of the program. Kan? 40 students were recruited, half of us went home. <laughs> So there were only 20 of us in the class, very small class, so we were very close-knit, you know, very, very, very close. Yeah, and then there was one thing that I noticed, not scientifically proven, but I noticed that we were all very bad at math. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that, that's not a joke, it's true. <laughs> we were all very bad at math. So I do not have good advice for you, but I wish you good luck. Well, that's good advice, um, nonetheless. Or, or, or maybe I should say, uh, always pick the number five, don't pick the top four and hope for the best. <laughs> well, that wasn't in my number five. <laughs> uh, amazing community-based conservation. Next question. How much growth in population of therapins compared to 2011 and now? I think um, it's always a question of... Uh, I think the the last time since it's sea turtle, I think um, the last numbers that went up for sea turtles of Pulau Redang, we saw a curve that looked like this, and then it went up after that after like, uh, how many years of doing conservation? 20. Like twenty <laughs> years, right? Yeah. Yeah. So is, after is it 20 years. is it the same? Is it the same for river terrapins? Are we seeing the same trend for river terrapins as what we are seeing for sea turtles? Oh. Okay, so right now, how do I put it? Right. So, so Kamama River is a large river, and in the river, there are many uh, river banks. There are many sand banks where the terrapins emerge to lay eggs. So, just now I mentioned that currently we are protecting four nesting banks, which means uh, whenever the terrapins come to any of these four nesting banks, their eggs will be collected and sent to the kampung for incubation. Uh, but what we are not getting is the complete story because there are also other river banks, right? So when therapists don't come to any of our four banks, it doesn't necessarily mean they are dead. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are uh, uh, extinct. <laughs> It could probably mean that they are laying their eggs elsewhere, you know, in other banks that we are not uh, protecting. So, first disclaimer is that we don't have a complete picture of uh, what is happening in the Kamaman River. Okay, uh, number two, these therapies take 20 years <laughs> to attain sexual maturity. And what this means is that these therapies take 20 years from like from a baby hatchling until they are mature enough to mate and then come back to lay eggs. So that is a very long time. And for us to be able to see the increase in the population uh, as a result of our conservation project, I think we would need at least 18, 18 years, 18, 20 years to be able to see the population climbing back up. Because the therapies that we have released uh, since 2012 until now 2021, they are still kids. They are still juveniles. They cannot lay eggs yet. And if you don't lay, if they don't lay eggs, then we are not counting them because we don't see them. And that goes. Uh, it's the same with the males. The males don't come to the riverbanks. They don't come up to the riverbank, so we don't see them. So we're not counting them. It's like doing a census, but you know with Missing data here and there, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's not very exhaustive. Yeah, but uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, we will see an increase in the terrapin a uh, number of terrapin ter terrapin population in another five eight years. <laughs> so we are halfway there. We are halfway there. So I invite you to walk with me uh, the other halfway. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I always tell the kids in the kampung, I say, Nanti make mari dengan tongkat. Uh. You know, to go to the river bank, I hope to see these therapies that we have microchip. I hope to see them come up to the eggs, you know, when I'm old and grey and, you know, with a walking stick. <laughs> but uh, for now, we don't have an answer for you. Okay. 
Uh, yeah. So Lynn said uh, she was with Sarini, Azrina, Azrin, Mazalina, and Ashley. Um, yeah. So there's a question. Um, third, Malaysia has established terrapin habitat area in Sungai Dungun, Sungai Setiu, Sungai Perak. What are the criteria of this habitat? Should only in estuary and mangrove area? Okay, so uh, the Department of Wildlife and National Parks, uh, Perhilitan, they have established three uh, river therapy facilities in three states in uh, Peninsular Malaysia. So we have one in Bukit Pinang, Kedah, we have one in Kota Kanan, Perak, and we have one in Kuala Berang, Terengganu. And I think one of the criteria, I think the main main criteria for establishing these three uh, river therapy facilities was that uh, the facilities needed to be located very, very near the main river where the therapies emerge to lay eggs. Because it doesn't make sense to have a facility that is far away and then you collect the terrapin eggs from one riverbank, then you need to travel two hours to get to the, the, the hatchery. And it doesn't make sense. So these three river uh, these three river therapy facilities were uh, uh, established right next to uh, in Inkada, right next to Sungai Pinang, in Pera, right next to Sungai Pera, uh, and in Trungganu, right next to Sungai Trungganu, the largest river in the state of Trungganu. Yeah, and, and I think the uh, Prohilitan, they had already, they knew, they knew that the river therapy populations um, was, was, was uh, declining because of the unsustainable collection of the eggs. Remember I said just now, the local villages did not start eating therapy eggs in 2020, you know. They have been consuming therapy eggs for decades. So maybe Prohilitan has already seen this. Because the first facility that they established in Pera, in Botakanan, that was in 1967. And that particular uh, facility is the oldest uh, head starting facility for freshwater turtles in the world. The oldest one. So it's the first one uh, anywhere in the world for freshwater turtles. So I guess Prohilitan back then already saw vision you know that we may need to one day increase our conservation efforts uh, otherwise we will lose the terrapins lah. and of course it doesn't help that these terrapins are only found in three countries of the world it's not like sea turtles uh, for example green turtles uh, upper new agar they are found in more than 80 countries in the world so <laughs> some people say you know if we lose them here they are elsewhere <laughs> But it's not the same with the Tuntung Sungai, the river terrapins. They're only found in three countries. We have them in Cambodia. We have them in Thailand. Peninsular Malaysia. Two and a half countries. They're, They're not, not found, found on Borneo. So confirm they are Malaysians, Thais and uh, <laughs> Cambodians. they got passport in these three countries only. They're not going anywhere else. Uh -huh. so, they, so their range is very small, only limited to these three countries, and they're not found elsewhere in the wild. And uh, So if we don't do anything to save our terrapins, then if we lose them in our rivers, then we lose them. Lah, because we, depend on, we cannot depend on other people's population. It's, it's just ours. Okay? Um, I think it's also nice to, to know their habitats in the sense that... Um, so there's, there's the uh, estuary, then there's the fresh water, and then there's the seawater. And so um, the seawater has seawater turtles. Sea turtles. Sea turtles, sorry. And then yeah. the fresh water has the river terrapins. Yeah, and, then there's and, this and the soft shell turtles. And the soft shell turtles and all the... the uh, the fresh water uh, ones. The ones that have fish on the oh, land. Those are tortoises. Tortoises, yeah. yeah. And then there's the one special one which lives in the river and then goes out to the sea, the sea yes then lays eggs on the beach yes and that guy got no passport because he's under <laughs> perhilitan and fisheries for a guy right. <laughs> yeah so that one is a painted terrapin yeah. so in painted terrapin uh, local malay name is uh, tuntung laut 
So, so dia tuntung juga duduk dalam sungai, it's a terrapin, lives in the same river like the, eh, sorry, it's a terrapin, lives in the same river as the river terrapin. But the females of this species, the painted terrapin, the tuntung laut, the females can go to the sea, or the males can too, but the females can go to the sea and then come out to lay eggs on the marine beach. So what this means is that the tuntung laut, the painted terrapins, they can tolerate salinity. They can tolerate seawater. So that's why the females and the males, they can be in the sea, they can be in the river, and the females, they, they can choose you know, whether they want to lay their eggs on the marine beach or a river bank, sand bank. Yeah, so that one is a special one. It's it's amazing that uh, uh, we we always hear about the the painted terrapins and the fact of the matter that um, they're actually half neither here nor there and so uh, they are they are here living in the river and then their kids are owned by uh, fisheries <laughs> <laughs> and then when they grow when they grow up from from being hatched they go back to the pehlitan department right? <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got a question. Do you enjoy your job? I do. I do. I, I'm so glad that I'm doing this uh, instead of not saying it's not a good job, but just not me. I'm not into it teaching. So I'm very glad that I'm doing this instead of in a teaching position, for example, in a university, because uh, this job has given me a lot of freedom to, to do... Uh, uh, projects that are uh, important, which I think are important. This this project has uh, this this job has allowed me to do more of what I believe in, rather than a set of KPIs set by people up there. So yeah, I I love my job. I totally don't mind spending many many hours uh, doing it. <laughs> it's good to know that. Um, there's a there's a comment in the chat that says um, how many interns do you accept per year? Uh, I'll be sending. Uh, she's from UPM, by the way. Uh, she'll be sending her resume in a year's time. Maybe you should ask her to send down. <laughs> no, <laughs> we'll, next year. We'll, next year. We'll, we'll it is next year. Next year. Yeah. So we we have uh, an office. Uh, we rent a, a, a double story house, which currently serves as our office. So then I have uh, I know. Uh, office setting on the downstairs and we have three rooms upstairs so we can take um one two three four five comfortably we can take five students uh in the uh, field office and um as long as your your internship duration uh doesn't clash with uh, other students then uh it should be fine lah yeah so we take up to 12 i think 12 uh, student interns uh in a year. Some of them are for shorter duration, like one month. Some of them are for longer, three months. I have two interns now who have been with us for a few months. Their internship is six months. <laughs> I hope they like to see this face. <laughs> um, uh, some, some of the students who, the interns who have joined us, uh, they were required by the university to do an internship. Uh, some of them, uh, it, it was their own uh, personal initiative. You know, they, they have uh, this gap year or they have this time between waiting for results. So they wanted to do something about it. So we take interns uh, if you are able to stay with us at least, at least two weeks. But of course, I wish you can stay with us at least one month. Lah. Because when you're here one month, then you are able to see you know, one year, more one year. aspects of the work we do. Yeah. Take them in for one year, then they can know the whole cycle from February to February. <laughs> so if you just join us for two weeks, then you may only see certain parts of our operations, our work. Then you may not see the whole picture. Then you may not understand why I do the things that I do. Yeah, so if you can stay for a month, then that gives us a lot of time to, to chit chat. Then I can explain to you why we're doing this. And then you can learn more, more hands on time too, you know, if you can spend a month. So I'm also sharing the uh, internship uh, website. I didn't know there's a hall of fame of all the interns. Amazing! <laughs> Amazing. So those things were done. 
at the beginning of MCO when we didn't know what to do with our time, do. right? Yeah, but now I don't have time to update that anymore. Now, now the interns feel so welcome, right? Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, like nothing to do. Then only you put your face up. Like got something to do. Then yeah. you know, take the back seat. Yeah, right? you send me a nice picture of you. Then I keep the picture for so long before I put it up. Yeah, you you know you know what you should do. You instead of putting the logo right, you should actually put uh the terrapin's face. You know, <laughs> with the, with the neck. You know, yeah. So um, Lin Lin has a has a request. He says, please inform people about the dangers of buying foreign terrapins as pets. I still remember oh. what you told us. Yeah, red red ear sliders. Yeah. So yeah, we have talked we have been talking a lot about red ear sliders coincidentally today on Twitter. Maybe because it's World Sea Turtle Day and then people start talking about Penyu and Kura Kura Telinga Mera red ear sliders. So yeah. There is a lot of things we can do with just the red ear sliders. So if anybody wants to do a mini project or research project on red ear sliders or even uh, community involvement, uh, talk to me. Okay. Um, but getting back to the red ear sliders. <laughs> so these red ear sliders, they are not native to Malaysia. They don't belong to Malaysia. And they are not native to many countries. I think they are native to US. <laughs> Which part, I'm actually not very sure. But they are native to the US. And in the US, um, people who keep them as pets, they, they cross-hybridize them. It's like, uh, okay, I like these turtles' uh, orange color ears. Or oh, I like the other turtles' uh, very nice uh, uh, pattern on the shell. So they put that turtle and this turtle together, so they cross-breed hybridize them and the more we hybridize the red ear sliders the more they become like ninja turtles so that is why they are very aggressive okay um, but unfortunately red ear sliders when they are small they're cute we were we were cute when we were small right <laughs> uh, they were so easy to be smuggled into different countries and they're so cheap um, you can easily get a pair two of them for i don't know like 10 15 ringgit and then the aquarium auntie will sell you the plastic container. And then the aquarium auntie will sell you uh, high quality pellets, you know, for you to fit the, the red ear sliders. And then when your red ear sliders, you know, have a disease, you go back to the auntie, the auntie will sell you a UV light. <laughs> Things like that. It's a very lucrative business. But what most people do not know is that red ear sliders because they are very aggressive and when you release them into the natural environment like uh, rivers, uh, ponds, lakes, where they are uh, native turtles, they will fight for resources. So in a pond, okay, let's say you tell me the pond is enclosed, like, you know, with fence all around and it's very steep cliff. Nobody can climb out. <laughs> there is, of course, a limited amount of food in that pond, right? So then they will need to fight for food, fight for resources. And because these red ear sliders have been hybridized so many times, they are so aggressive, they will win. And they, with their super long claws, they will win and they will, they will probably kill our local turtles as well. So that is why, number one, we don't encourage anybody to keep turtles as pets because they live very long. And number two, if you have a red ear slider or two at home right now, just continue raising it. It's just fine it being in your house. But don't go buy more. And uh, if one day you find that you don't want it anymore, uh, don't just release it into the drain outside your house. Um, maybe let your friend's kids adopt it from you. Then you can give them, you know, the whole set of uh, aquarium and uh, pellets and UV light. You know, give, give it to the kid, you know, for somebody else who wants to uh, adopt your red ear sliders. But... Also, don't release them into temple ponds. Some people, especially Chinese, you yeah, feel, you say think temple temple that releasing these the, uh, turtles into temple ponds, fong sang, huh? fang shen, fang shen, uh, it is not a good uh, practice because you don't, you don't buy food for them. You know, you're just leaving them, you're just dumping them there in the, in the temple ponds. And in the temple ponds, there are other turtles as well. And most of them are local turtles, like box turtles. What happens when they meet and they don't have enough resources? They fight and die in the temple, right? So don't do that. 
don't 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 send don't dump your unwanted turtles uh, in temples but instead uh, ask around and see if anybody has uh, children or you know nieces or nephew who who's looking for a turtle who may want to adopt yours so don't 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 buy more from the pet shop and uh, let others adopt your turtle if you no longer want it but the best is still don't buy turtles from pet shops because they live very long when the buying stops, stops, the, the when the yeah. buying stops, what was it? The killing. Yeah, yeah the, the killing, killing stops, stops too. too. Yeah, but it, it's it's ironic, right? I mean, um, apart from having a license to import these red ears, um, there's also the fact that um, there is licenses to collect river terrapin eggs. No, 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 no more. Um, no, no. Uh, uh, we. we the river terrapin, so uh, uh, out of the 18 species of freshwater turtles and tortoises in Malaysia, Lapan Blas, um, all of them are protected in the country. Okay, One of them, which is the river terrapin, is listed as a totally protected species. And what this means is that you cannot apply for a license to, uh, to keep uh, terrapins. So what we have is a special permit. It's called the permit has from uh, the Perhilitan, which we have to apply and renew every year. So that's a, a permit, not a license. Yeah, but for other turtles, yes, uh, you can apply for a license from uh, Department of Wildlife, Perhilitan. And whether or not they issue you the license is entirely up to them, lah, up to the officer. So there's no way of collecting river terrapin eggs anymore. There's no more licenses. Uh, um, so, so river, river terrapin, they, they are not, not like seeded eggs, eggs that, that you can, can apply uh, for, for a tender to, to collect eggs. eggs. So, so this this uh, gang tuntung uh, therapy guardians, therapy guardians who are collecting these eggs, they are like um, people who are working for us. us. So, so they, they don't have a separate license to collect therapy eggs. They don't. Perhilitan has never given, given out that, that kind of licenses for river terrapins. Oh, okay. Is, is, this, uh, is the sea turtles that have it, yes, licenses the to collect right. for consumption and for sale? or? Um, so, so, okay. okay. With, With sea turtles, turtles it's a different, different story because, because we have our country has a very long coastline. And, and the Department of Fisheries, Jabatan Perikanan, they do not have resources to patrol the entire coastline very long okay? so then they protect um, beaches that are popular a lot of sea turtles come up to lay eggs and then they hire rangers uh, department of fisheries they hire rangers to patrol these uh, beaches to collect the eggs sea turtle eggs and then uh, incubate these sea turtle eggs but what about but what about uh, short beaches uh, less popular beaches where uh, sea turtles come up maybe one or two in a year <laughs> or in a few years, the less popular ones, those are the beaches where uh, it's open for tender. So the, I, I'm not very familiar with the tendering system because I've never done that before, but uh, you, typically it's the local villagers la, who submit a tender to Department of Fisheries. I think they pay a fee to, uh, to collect these eggs. So if they, I think if they sell the eggs back to Department of Fisheries, Department of Fisheries may buy the eggs, sea turtle eggs. What does what does the government, as in the fisheries, do with the eggs that they tender out to? So license eggs collectors. What what do they do with the eggs when they go to the fisheries? Uh, if if the fisheries department has funds to uh, buy back the eggs, then I think they would buy the eggs back and then incubate the eggs, uh, in in the hatchery. So it's it's like um not having rangers on these nesting beaches, but then uh subcontract it out to other people to do the job. Yeah, it's something like that. So instead of having somebody in your payroll, you, you now have, have contract, contract workers. workers. But uh, which I guess is a long term uh, saves money. So a clutch of, of nests would be how many, uh, what, 100, 200 eggs? 
Yeah, yeah for, for, for green turtles, turtles yeah, yeah, for green turtles, yeah, every, every clutch uh, on average may have, I would say, 100 to 120 eggs. And they would come in, like, egg. say, 9 to 10 times every nesting season? Yeah, yeah some, some, some of them 5 times, some of them 9, eight, nine 10 times so yeah, this, in one year. This, uh -huh. this 100 to 120 eggs is, is, in a way, not accountable. I mean, to say that, you know, if, if la, I'm not saying that, you know, if the the guy that won the tender decides to take 20 for himself and then 100 for Pahiletan, then nobody, uh, sorry, to the fisheries, then nobody. Fisheries. nobody yeah, but, 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 um, but don't, don't forget that it is not wrong. It is not wrong to to collect and consume sea turtle eggs because they are not protected yet. So earlier this year, we read in the newspaper that uh, uh, by the end of this year, sometime in November, the collection and consumption of uh, turtle eggs, green turtle eggs in Trunganu will be banned. But we do not know how that's going. Uh, at the moment in Trunganu, I'm saying Trunganu because you don't find turtle eggs in Trunganu, right? Uh, so I'm using Trunganu as uh, an example. Uh, for in Trunganu, so far to date, only the eggs of leatherback turtles are protected. But we don't even see leatherback turtles anymore, right? Yeah, so what we see and what people keep telling us is that uh, there are a lot of turtle eggs being sold in Pasar Payang. Uh, there are a lot of turtle eggs being sold in the markets. Yeah, we, we already know that. Yeah, but then it's not illegal. You know, unless those eggs were stolen from a sea turtle sanctuary. But by just looking at the turtle eggs in front of you, there is no way to tell the origin of the eggs, right? So, so there, there are loopholes. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm trying to say here is that there are loopholes in our legislation. We have laws to protect our wildlife, but um, enforcement may be lacking in some areas, but uh, there are loopholes. Um, so two follow-up questions to that. Um, I think uh, the ones in Trangano, the number one question is do they actually come from Trangano or do they come from Sabah and then the second question with regards to uh, nests and clutches I'm not sure whether you covered uh, how many eggs per clutch for river terrapins and painter terrapins okay we'll, we'll talk about the sea turtle first um, no there is no way of telling uh, where, well, unless you want to do genetic studies la, but with naked eyes there is no way of telling uh, with the eggs came from which state, you know, yeah, even if the eggs came from Sabah, you cannot tell by looking at the eggs. Yeah, so, so that's why when you have, when you go to the market like uh, Pasar Payang, then you ask the Machi, you know, uh, these eggs come from where, you know, dari mana dapat telur penyu ni? Takkan she will tell you she stole it from the sanctuary, <laughs> right? Yeah, she, she will say other things lah. Yeah, I do not know about other things lah, you know? So... And um, clutches in the river terrapin. So, river terrapins lay very small clutches. Uh, they lay a maximum of 43 eggs in one nest. And uh, I don't see 43 eggs in one nest. Uh, it's documented, it's published in a paper. But uh, what I'm seeing here in Kemaman is between 25 and 35 eggs. So, that's... <laughs> 25 to 35 eggs per year, one time per year, compared to 800 or 1,000 eggs laid by a sea turtle in one year. Yeah, so they lay small clutches, or very small clutches, and just once. They produce just one clutch. Unlike sea turtles, they produce multiple clutches. Uh, it's, it's not three clutches, it's one clutch, but they don't put all their eggs in one clutch. They don't put all their eggs in one basket. So they dig a hole, they lay maybe 15 eggs, and then they close it, they cover it, and then they dig a second nest, B, and then they lay some eight eggs, they cover it, and then they dig a C, third nest, and then they lay some five eggs in there. But all these eggs are one batch, one clutch. After that, no more that she has laid all the eggs, she will not come back a second time for a new batch of eggs. It's just that one clutch. All so the some, same night? Hmm? Some, some at the same night. Some lay uh, all these three nests in one night, 35 eggs in a night. Some of them come back again. So in 2015-16, um, 
my my uh my co supervisor came over from Australia. He brought with him this uh 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 machine to ultrasound machine, <laughs> ultrasound machine uh to ultrasound the females. So when the one female when she's done laying when she's done laying eggs and turn around about to go back into the river, we caught her. We took her to the campsite and then we scan her. We ultrasound scan her. And then we found that there were eggs in there. So then we, we tag her and then she come back later, you know, a few more days later to finish laying those eggs. But not like sea turtles. Sea turtles lay all 100 to 120 eggs and then uh, the follicles, the little follicles, the unshelled eggs in the sea turtles will take about 12 days to mature. And then when they are mature, they have the shells, the eggs have shells, and then they come up to the beach to lay a second clutch, and then a third, and then a fourth. You know, it's always about 10, 12, 14 days in between. But the terrapins, just one clutch. Whether she lays all of them in one night or over a span of one month in two different nights or three different nights, but it's only just one clutch. After these eggs are laid, she will have no follicles to develop. Mm -hmm. I guess it goes with the size and also, I mean, I mean river terrapins are a bit smaller. Smaller, than the, yeah, the, the, smaller. The, the sea. And eggs are larger. The legs are larger, yeah, it's uh, oblong kind of. Oblong, yeah, yeah bujo panjang. And then yeah. the, the green turtles have... Uh, right, that's uh, ping pong. Ping pong balls, yeah. Yeah, so and, the, and, and green turtles are at least one meter in length. And the therapines, the female therapines, uh, an adult female is only about 60 centimeters. So only, only two thirds of the size of an adult sea turtle. But so, the eggs are bigger. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sharing a picture of uh, uh, slash kemaman dash conservation where um, there's a picture of your, your mentor um, using the ultras. Uh, ultra scan on a river therapy with uh, Pachi Wazi holding it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it, it's it's interesting to um also note that um, yeah. So I think I think um in Sabah they they do this right when they come up to you, and yeah, they are, yeah, that's that's how they ask you whether you want to look at you. It's not whether you're okay or not okay, right? It's whether you want you want eggs, right? Yeah, so I'm sharing an article on uh, Awani that says that uh, selling of turtle eggs in Pasar Payang is not wrong, um, but for uh, Belimbing, it's wrong. I guess I guess because it's uh, it's already uh, extinct, right? So I mean, yeah, it's not well, it extinct was, it worldwide, was, um... but it's extinct from Trengganu, right? Yeah, and that law came up um, in effect. In I think 18, 18, 1989. the letter back one, nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, so it's been a long time. So you know we we still have green turtles and we should protect them, right? Not wait until you know they go the way the letter backs go and then only we decide to to uh, to take drastic action. Can yeah. Totally agree. Um, the the questions and answers from the chat has stopped. Uh, the the okay. questions have stopped. I guess. Uh, okay. Um, just I just said that then. Um, so there's a there's a bahasa question that came in. Kalau boleh saya bertanya, apakah bidang kerja yang ada dalam bidang ini selain daripada penyelidik dan adakah luas peluang pekerjaan dalam bidang ini di Malaysia atau hanya di TCS? I think that's a very burning question of all the graduates that come out from UMT, uh, right? And uh, yeah. some of them are not doing what they study. So maybe you can comment on that. Well, uh, the, the research bidang kerja, actually, it's a terus terang lah. Bila saya graduate dengan degree marine biology, biology marine pun, saya secara terus terang tak nampak ada apa bidang kerja yang sesuai untuk uh, para graduan. So, 
saya tak bolehlah nak nak komen sangat tetapi apa yang saya ingat dari dulu lagi masa tengah belajar ada supervisor ada lecturer seorang dia bagi tahu dia kata if you cannot find a job create a job so i guess that was what i did um, even when i was studying masa tengah belajar biology marine pun ramai orang niat dia baiklah kan ramai orang dari keluarga ke uh, kawan keluarga tanya Wah, you belajar biology marina. Nanti bila dah grad kerja apa? I always never had a, an answer for them. Ya, yeah, terus terang lah kan. I tak tahu, I tak tahu betul. So then, um, tapi once I am doing this now myself, I can tell you that uh, sebenarnya bidang dia quite luas juga. Tetapi dia kena berkait dengan uh, uh, conservation ataupun in my case, uh, reptiles, turtles kan. So, For example, I set up this NGO with a former supervisor, kami berdua. Uh, my former supervisor is very famous for her sea turtle studies. She was studying, researching sea turtles for more than 30 years. So she's very experienced. She was a, a professor in the university. Uh, and then saya pula pelajar dia. And both of us tak ada pengalaman langsung untuk manage an organization, untuk manage a non-profit organization. And when I'm leading the organization now, I realize that uh, I also need researchers untuk lebih um, uh, membuat kajian terhadap uh, freshwater turtles in the country. But I will also need people who are outside of this field. I will need a bookkeeper, somebody who can do my accounts. <laughs> you know, I will need uh, people who are into uh, education. Kalau you ada persijilan mengajar pun, because we also go to schools and, you know, uh, talk to kids about uh, awareness lah. You know, jangan makan telur penyu, things like that. We could develop, we could potentially develop syllabus that uh, all the schools in Malaysia can use, you know, when it comes to turtles or turtle conservation ataupun uh, conservation of wildlife. So we will need uh, different people uh, from different backgrounds to to come together to run an organization. Bukan sahaja dari bidang ini. So to answer your question, I would say there are other organizations. Bukan sahaja TCS di Malaysia. Other non-profit organizations. You probably already know about them. Other Persatuan Pencinta Alam. Other WWF. Kan? Uh, kemudian, if you are into teaching, you enjoy uh, uh, working with uh, youth, you can consider teaching. Uh, ataupun, uh, if you further your studies and you get your PhD, then you can become a lecturer in the university. Uh, kalau with just one bachelor's degree, maybe you could do teach, maybe you could teach science in school, kan? promote STEM. Yeah. So, I, I think they are, we can we need to brainstorm about it, but I'm pretty sure... There's something for somebody else. So, untuk sesiapa yang baru saja dapat uh, keputusan SPM tu, uh, very good results ataupun okay-okay results, uh, don't don't feel too bad about it. Um, ada lagi, you know, the, the road in front of you is so long. Banyak lagi masa. So, uh, volunteer, if you think you are uh, interested in conservation ataupun uh, hidupan liar, uh, volunteer with this organization so that you uh, betul-betul dapat merasai, menjiwai kerja-kerja dia. Adakah you suka sangat, you know, kerja macam tu? Ataupun, oh, nasib baik I volunteer dulu. Sebenarnya bukan pun minat sangat. <laughs> you know, then you switch to other things. Yeah, but volunteering will give you a very good um, opportunity to get more hands-on and uh, get to know the work that uh, organizations do and then you can make your decision. You're what, 18 years old, you don't have to make a decision now, okay? And when you get into university, uh, the skills that I think are very critical is not just the degree that you get, you know, when you graduate from the university, it's a lot of other skills that you, 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 you pick up in the three or four years you're in school. So, the masuklah uh, skills uh, komunikasi, the masuklah skills, uh, all, all those skills that people think are soft skills, which I think are critical skills. You know, working independently is a skill. Working in a team is a skill. Negotiating or uh, just articulating your ideas. Ada idea, tapi tak tahu macam mana nak pergi cakap dengan orang lain. Takut dia orang ban terus your idea. So, these things pun kena belajar. Kan? Writing is a skill. Like in my work, I do a lot of grant writing. Asyik-asyik kena minta duit dari orang lain. Kan? So, we need to do a lot of writing. Report writing. Bila dah dapat duit, buat dah projek tu. So, what you think? Close the file and move on lah. Tak boleh. Kena tulis laporan juga. Kan? 
So yeah, a lot of these skills you will pick up in your university, which I think your employer will appreciate. So um, don't stress, don't overstress about the degree that you are learning uh, in the university. Yeah. I guess I guess the re- one of the reasons why we're doing this career talk during this MCO3 is also because um, we understand that a lot of kids uh, and especially parents and teachers out there that are worried for their students and their kids because, you know, you're looking at very new times and, and, and so yeah. um, we are all, you know, uh, in a way, Mother Nature is having a hard reset. Yeah. And so, you know, nature is coming back uh, but, you know, life versus livelihood in terms of uh, yes. jobs are not there, right? And so the reason why, you know, partly we're doing this is also to to see what is it that is there, what is it that people are doing now, and, and what can we do after this, right? Yeah. Um, and so uh, to answer Amril, um, I, guess, I guess to echo what you said in terms of um, the existing jobs that are there um, and, and to create jobs is something that is, you know, um, one part of you which is an entrepreneur, like, you know, and obviously you didn't wake up one day and say, I want to be an entrepreneur. You didn't wake up one day and say, I want to be a conservationist. And you didn't wake up one day and say, like, let's do zoology and and, <laughs> and, and let's take care of river therapies, right? And, and, and yeah. it's been, what, 20 years now? No, not yet. Almost. 16, 17 years. <laughs> and, 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 and the good thing is um, you don't have to, you know, deal with office politics and, and colleagues, right? Because your only colleague is the turtle that doesn't talk, right? Yeah, well, that's, that's also, also the, the bad, bad thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, having, not, not having a peers to bounce ideas off, you know? Yeah, not, not having somebody who, uh, who can contribute uh, to, to science together. Yeah, that, that part is missing, yeah, which I miss, yeah. Um, so she says, uh, uh, Amriel says, thank you very much. Um, what other stuff, um, what, what do we have to look forward to um, post-COVID if, if all this goes away? So what, what are your plans for um, River Terrapin, Sea Turtles and uh, the Turtle Conservation Society of Malaysia as a whole? Um, we, right before COVID, we have been speaking with uh, Majlis Perbandaran Kemaman, MPK in Kemaman, and we were discussing of the, the possibilities of expanding the project. And then now we have more stakeholders, so now we have a team uh, who who's working together towards the same goal. And then COVID happened, and then we stopped meeting each other. So uh, hopefully when the situation becomes uh, more manageable, we are able to resume those discussions and see how further we can uh, work together with the local council, local communities uh, to, to expand our conservation efforts. And not, just, not just conservation efforts, to expand this uh, river terrapin or freshwater turtle uh, uh, research and conservation plus education efforts in the state. Yeah. So, so that's something that I am... Uh, looking forward to lah. Plans other than Kemaman or still in Kemaman for now? And uh, are you are you are you looking forward to doing some genetic? Um, maybe doing another degree? You know. <laughs> no, but uh, I am looking forward to um, doing more science. So, but, but to do more science, I will need help. And so I am looking forward to uh, uh, perhaps hiring another person uh, to join our team uh, so that we are able to do more together. Yeah, because it's, it's like a, a catch-22 situation. You know, you have this much manpower, then you are only able to do this much work. If you're only able to do this much work, then you're only able to, uh, to get this much funding because there's only this number of people applying for funding. Can? So I always believe that uh, when we have more people in the team, we are able to do uh, more and we are able to do more things faster, better together and stronger together, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, so that part I'm looking forward to, to, uh, to expand our, uh, our team. 
Yeah. How has uh how has funding been uh during COVID has has the society been able to keep the projects afloat? Um, how how was adoption last year? I mean adoption oh. as in not the comb the therapy but adoption as in uh. Maybe you can explain that part as well. Yeah, symbolic adoption. Yeah. So we part of our fundraising efforts. Uh, it is a, 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 an adoption program, but you cannot keep the therapines. We will raise them for you. And uh, to adopt a therapine, you need to make a donation of 35 ringgit. Uh, if you require a receipt, we will write you a tax deductible receipt. And for kids, we usually offer them a certificate uh, which they can just, you know, uh, blue tag on their wall. So for each adoption that we receive, uh, it is one terrapin that is symbolically adopted. And it is one way to show people that they are able to put their money to good use. Because once we release these terrapins, we will not catch them back and let another person adopt it. So it's just one time. And, and we hatch this therapines from eggs you know we didn't go to the river and scoop them up and then offer it to you for adoption so that's not the way it does that's not the way it's, ha it's happening lah. so that therapy adoption program um, has has been able to raise uh, we have been able to raise quite a bit of funding through the adoption program i cannot remember what we made last year <laughs> what do you mean six months already i don't remember everything <laughs> but um because of the COVID pandemic, we have also scaled down our projects because we, we cannot uh, continue running DCS like in 2019 and because we are not able to raise that kind of funds. Um, I mentioned earlier that we haven't been able to host the educational trips. Those trips bring in significant funding for us, but we haven't been able to do that in one and a half years. We're doing the virtual tours now, but it's not the same. Can okay? I actually enjoy doing hosting the trips lah, But um, since you cannot come over these days, uh, we we do the virtual tours. Um, but the virtual tours also bring in generate income, but not as much as uh when we were able to host uh student groups. So um, once funding is affected, uh, our operations also need to be uh scaled down. Yeah, what, what needs to be um, uh, cut off is cut off. You know, what needs to be maintained, we maintain. So, for example, when we don't have interns at the office, uh, if I go to the office to do work, uh, I, I just switch on the electricity for my laptop, you know, not even my phone and the fan, you know, and perhaps a light or two. So we were able to maintain an electricity bill at like 390 per month. So we have to do that because... Uh, funding has been affected. Yeah, so things like Unify, pakai tak pakai pun kena bayar, kan? Yeah. So we cannot run away from paying Unify, but electricity bill can. Uh, I switch, totally switch off the fridge in the office. Yeah, so we, we make adjustments. We need to make adjustments here and there. And, uh, and we need to make do lah with what we are able to raise. So maybe people from the outside may see that hey, why is this health, you know, Asyik -asyik tengok, jual barang je, you know? So that is one of the ways you are staying afloat. Instead of going around looking for donations, you know, asking, begging, you know, like a professional beggar, you know, do you want to make a donation? So we are now selling you things and we are hoping that when you make a donation, you also get something in return. Can you feel happy, can when you go shopping? So yeah, shop with us. <laughs> um, I actually pulled up your shop. <laughs> Um, ah. I'm yeah. So your shop is uh with the collar pin and the. Uh, Are you looking at the BCS shop, shop or the Shopee shop? <laughs> you don't hear any Shopee ting ting right? So that's definitely not Shopee shop lah. So uh, uh scrunchies. We have, we have people who uh suggested that we set up a shop in Shopee, but uh mana lah ada masa nak buatkan benda benda tu right? Until very recently, we had two interns who were able to come to Kemaman and you know, be here and physically help out with work, then I delegated some tasks to them, then I was able to set up the Shopee shop. Yeah, so the Shopee shop was set up in the first or second week of May. Just last month. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think you should also get someone to pledge your internet access and your electricity for a year or something like that, you know. Um, you know, pledge electricity, pledge... Uh, unify, 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 electricity, you know. Uh, pledge uh, food for the therapy in Splash. Uh, right, yeah, pledge. yeah, we have um, uh, uh, a fundraiser, which is, um, if you want to, you may purchase a big uh, 20 kilo bag of pellets for the therapies. So that's 70 ringgit. And we, if we have about three, 400 therapies, that one big bag will last us about two weeks. So some of those things that we do like to raise funds. They sure eat a lot. What was your what was your number of eggs last uh, February? You would have hatched by now, right? Has it hatched? Yes, we had six hundred plus eggs. Uh, right now we have about two hundred plus <coughs> hatchlings. I don't have the figures now. Yeah. Oh, so there's another four hundred not hatched yet, or okay. Yeah. That's an interesting time to be in Kemaman right now, right? So that's why I say when you join us at uh, different times of the month, different months of the year, uh, you learn different things. You get to be hands-on doing different things. You need to train someone to take over uh, 20 years from now. <laughs> like to train someone now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before you end up in the tongkat, right? Right, yes. So, I can still walk now, so, yeah. Janganlah tunggu sampai saya kena angkat, ambil tongkat, baru nak balik berguru. Well, um, uh, Siti Haja is, is quite excited to go to Kemaman someday. I guess um, everybody being cooked up in the house, I think yeah. they're, they're more than happy to go anywhere at this juncture. And scrub, and scrub the ponds, right? <laughs> yeah. and, and, and also because of the COVID <laughs> pandemic, uh, we didn't have, we couldn't host groups, can so we were able to uh, close our center. Uh, we upgraded our our uh, terrapin ponds. Yeah, so it's a lot easier now to clean the ponds lah. Kalau dulu ni kena berus dengan berus besi, uh, sekarang ni sekejap saja because I tiled it. Well, I hired people to tile it already. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we did, did some upgrade. upgrading works lah. Yeah. <laughs> Any advice to um? kids and parents out there I know I know you already gave some advice um, to um, existing uh, researchers but any advice in general to careers and um, you know I, I guess you've already given in the sense that just just do that first paper and then figure out later right but uh, um, and then you know doesn't matter whether you get your top five just Take the fifth one and they just hope that you can change course and make way. <laughs> totally <laughs> bad advice. <laughs> but um, yes, yes. Um, I, I want to advise young people uh, to, to put your heart into doing whatever you are doing. I have had very good interns. Uh, I just say it once and they just get it and then they take initiative to do better. They always strive to show me that, uh, that, that they're trying their best. Yeah, of course, I'm also evaluating them, so maybe that's why, but it doesn't matter whatever our motivation is. Um, always, always be resourceful. The reason you have a job the reason you are hired is because your employer thinks you can help them. But if you cannot help your employer, then you are of no use. And if you are of no use, then you are at a very dangerous place of losing your job, regardless of what certificates you have. So, always, always take initiative. Always, always do more than you are required of because you know what? Fresh graduates are young. You are 23, 24 years old. No family yet. Can? So you can afford to put in a few more hours into your work or whatever it is or to perfect it or to make it better. Can? Be resourceful. Don't go back to your employer with a problem without giving a solution. You know, I, I hire you because I thought you could help me. But you know what? You're giving more problems. You know, you're giving me more headache. That's not helpful. Lah. <laughs> so... so um... The, the the my my one of my ex bosses, um so so he always puts his hands up like this, and he says help. There's two help, right? 
one is help this way and the other one is help this way <laughs> so it really depends uh, which help that you're giving um, so Puffy Bob uh, in the chat has mentioned uh, any restriction to senior citizens retired uh, who are physically fit offering their time to intern? We had a 60-year-old man, well, I wouldn't call him interning with us. Uh, he, he wrote to us um, and he, he said he had experience, you know, many years of experience leading this company and he was doing this before retirement. Um, I, I felt a little intimidated <laughs> by somebody who has so much experience, uh, making so much money, wanting to intern with us, you know, malu lah kan. But this, this guy, this gentleman, he was really nice. Um, he didn't intern with us, but he did come over to Kemaman and uh, I think he, I asked him to stay in a hotel, <laughs> not in our field office. I think he stayed in a hotel. Um, but he did uh, give uh, uh, suggestions or after seeing our operations, he did give suggestions on how we can improve certain aspects of our work. So even though we are unable to materialize all his suggestions at that time, it's something I remember here. And what do we know? This gentleman even taught me about uh, posture, you know, when giving a talk, a speech on stage, you know, things like that. So it's always really nice to hear, to learn from people who have more experience. Yeah, Even if that person do, does not have experience in our kind of work, that person is still more experienced. Okay? He has seen more things. He has experienced more things, more met different people. Okay? Yeah. So, so uh, for senior citizens, please don't call yourself an intern. <laughs> um, I, I, I love to meet. Uh, anybody who wants to come and see our operations and if you have suggestions or on how we can improve or if you have uh, network your connections on you know who can help us achieve our objectives then yeah I'd like to speak with you how, how would they get in, uh, in touch with you? Oh, they, <laughs> this is funny I was going to ask these people to sign up using the internship form <laughs> because I only have that one form <laughs> Yeah, or just send me an email. You go to our website, scroll all the way down. You see our office address. You see my email. Yeah, send yeah, me an email. All emails, all forms, all direct messages on Facebook and Instagram and Shopee all goes to you. Oh, no, no, not all. No, not all. Yeah. Uh, uh, Alia, Alia, our education coordinator, she is very helpful. She's helping me with uh, some of this social media. I only have these two hands. Oh, and our interns, yeah. What would I do without interns? So your emails may get unanswered for about a week. <laughs> yeah, but I read all my emails. Uh, sometimes it just takes longer. So write to me. Alia is the, the first intern that never left, is it? No, October. Oh, no, no, no. Alia, Alia is our first staff. Uh, Alia is our first uh, paid staff. There's another Alia, okay, I guess it's another Alia by the same name. I can't seem, oh, Alia is very common. <laughs> I can't seem to find a 60-year-old on the internship list. Oh, he wasn't an intern. Yeah, you should give a, a name to it. Like, what do you call old turtles? <laughs> his name is, his name is Alex. Oh, no, what do you call old turtles? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know, I know Tan Sri Saleh used to call this, uh, this turtle in, was it George? Was it the old... Oh, the, the oldest, oldest one. one. Is, it, is it George? The oldest uh, Galapagos tortoise? Galapagos, yeah. And he said, like, I've seen it before. I've been to there and I've seen the oldest turtle. But I think it died a few years ago, right? Gun, gun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so maybe you should create a slash uh, George ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's true. It's true that you know sometimes you you don't only learn from people who are older than you. You also learn from people that are younger than you because tell uh, me about it. Yeah, they they bring the energy, right? And and of course, uh, they teach me about <laughs> social media and TikTok and and Instagram reels. I don't even know what that was. Uh, yeah, yeah, interns teach me things too. And, and then yeah. the, the older ones, obviously, they teach you uh, more about experience and life experience, right? right? Yeah. 
Yeah. So you you basically, I mean, then again, the, the whole the whole idea of, of you know um, what we do and raise our kids is we want to raise lifelong learners, lah, because learning never stops, right? At the end of the day. Yeah. 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 All right. I think I think this is the the longest session um we we've, we've had um we've always uh, cut it off. Is our audience still here? Yeah, or is it just yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, surprisingly, we've we've had six to seven uh constant um people, and we've we still got people joining uh, because the the session has lasted so long. So I I had more time to 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 send out um uh, uh the links out to more people, um so. I'm I'm also helping out with the Malaysian Scientific Association, uh, and and so I haven't been to the TCS website for many many years, um. So the more reason why you know, um, we should share it out to to more people, and so um, it it's amazing that uh, you do what you do, um. I I would actually love to see uh. Um, your mentor and sea turtle enthusiast who spent twenty years of her life, uh, back as well, but um, yeah. So um, maybe we should um wrap it up a bit. Um, I I normally send my kids uh the next speaker, but I don't even know who's the next speaker. Um, yeah, <laughs> look one yes. Uh, knowledge is never ending. And uh, thank you for joining us on the stream tonight. Um, Lokman was streaming uh, almost three hours actually uh, on football. So um, there's actually a link on uh, there's actually a link uh, a QR code that has been displayed uh, on the live stream where you can actually do a a hundred percent donation straight to TCS because Boost doesn't even uh, take what, what Boost at? Yeah. yeah Boost doesn't even take a single cent. No. Um, which is which is a very nice thing because they still have to pay for their their clearance and you yes, know yes, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the transactions, transactions the services, the bank charges. Yeah, so it's amazing that they're doing it for free for uh, an NGO. Um, tomorrow we actually have an entrepreneur, uh, which is Johnson Lam from Kaki DIY, um, and so um, he's with Anziata right now, who happens mm-hmm. to be also the parent company for Boost. Oh, Boost, yeah. yes. <laughs> Yeah, um, so um, uh, just just a round of thank yous and and uh, overwhelming uh, uh, messages from both uh, Siti Haja and Lin, uh, who wishes you all the best uh, to you. you and the team. Uh, I think uh, they're all thankful for the session. So I hope that um, oh she just bought something from Shopee. Yay! Obviously, we didn't hear a thing on your side, so you don't get the message. <laughs> no. Yay! Yeah. I I think Shopee takes a, a cut, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and, uh, and uh, because, because remember, remember I said I'm bad in math, I, I do not know how to calculate, calculate all these things. Thank goodness, yeah. it's automatic. Yeah. So, 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 so there's a there's a formula because, uh, if they take thirty percent and you minus thirty percent, you don't get what you set the price out to be. So forwardly, you need to be more than backwardly, lah. Yeah. So yeah, no, no, it's, it's not, not that much. much. It's, it's a couple, couple of percent. percent. Yeah, it, it depends yeah. if it's if it's less than ten percent, you don't really see it. But if it's thirty percent, then you gotta you gotta mark up hundred and fifty percent. Yeah. If not, you won't get the percentage back. Yeah. Correct. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess the other option is to have someone from e-commerce or someone from Shopee who is listening today to wave <laughs> the percentage off, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well, I, I set up the, the e-commerce in our website uh, sometime last year. Um, but the the benefit of being on Shopee is that the volume, the traffic, right? So we have our e-commerce, you know, we, we pay a 3% uh, service fee for each transaction, which I'm very happy to pay. Uh, but then uh, people don't go to our website daily, right? But yeah. so many people go to Shopee uh, multiple times in a day. <laughs> multiple so, times. Ah uh-huh. ha! So it's the uh, it's, it's the traffic la, that is uh what what Shopee has that our website doesn't have. Yeah. So it's really uh, going to where the money is, where the people are. Yeah. So you can you can sell amazing hand woven stuff on your website that nobody goes to, and then you beat yourself up because it doesn't get sold, right? Or you can make less profit 
but uh, it is placed on a platform where many people see it. Okay? So it's, it's a balancing scale. Lah. So uh, I'm being very honest that we are on Shopee because we need the money. <laughs> we need to sell merchandise because we need the money. <laughs> I need to get paid. Kan? <laughs> so that's why we are there. But we are not until that level, you know, where we mark up 300%, you know, to, to make a lot of profit. We're not, we're not there. Yeah, it's, it's still uh, at the back of my head to provide uh, souvenirs, merchandise that is affordable. Yeah, so that people buy, kan? <laughs> buy, go buy, go shop with us. Well, thanks, Adrian, for having me tonight. Uh, it's been nice catching up. Uh, although I cannot see other things that is happening except your face. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I should have sent you the link. Yeah, but, yeah. So, so I mean, I don't see this, uh, you know, in, in a Zoom or a stream yet. At least you can see other people or whatever is happening. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah but on, on Skype, I don't see anything except myself and you. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, that, that, that has always been the complaint that a lot of people have been have, uh yeah, so uh, I didn't opt for StreamYard. I opted for something else, which is on the Mac. So, um, yeah, it was, it was something that was familiar to me because I was using it throughout the whole year. And I, I think I think Zoom gets a bit annoying when people come in and out, and then yeah. Uh, yeah. So so yeah. It's, it's it's just a matter of platform. I think I think StreamYard. Um, after, um, after using StreamYard and and seeing other people use StreamYard, I think. That's like the the go to because it's all web based and then you can have multiple uh, uh, hosts and then you can just drop out from it and still the stream is live. Like this one, if I I were to drop out from it, then everybody will not be able to see anything anymore. So, yeah. Okay. Um. So um. Thank you very much. Uh. Best regards to your your family and kid. Thank you. Uh, everybody is asking. Thank you, Adrian. Everybody is asking me to go to stream yet now. Yeah, 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 you, you should, should, you should, should go, go get, get some rest. No, no, go to stream yard. Stream yard. <laughs> I heard you say everybody yeah, asking me to go to sleep. So yeah, go to sleep. Ten o'clock. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta sort out the family and and see ah, okay. whether they are positive tomorrow or not. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Uh, all good. Uh, I've got, uh, I've got, I've got ten doctors messaging me tonight. Uh, after doing the face shield and and. Uh, stuff so I've got ten doctors who who who's asked me. So do you need anything? I said yeah. Uh, one PS five, one iPhone twelve, and probably some money to donate to the Total Conservation <laughs> Society. And then I got I got a good friend from uh, Kuantan say that oh yeah. By the way, if you get an iPhone twelve, I also need one. So I got I got to get two now. So yeah, go figure. All right. Thank you very much. Uh. Appreciate your time spent. Uh, wish you all the best with your virtual tours. Oh yeah, Thank um, you. just just one more one more uh tip before you go. I think one of my friends actually shared that um, you know all those handicraft stuff that you guys do. Apparently, they fetch uh, a a higher amount because you see the problem with Malaysians is they don't appreciate art too much. Um, but the overseas market or the overseas people so. Uh, if you know Etsy, as in e Etsy, as well, yes. Etsy, yeah, the handmade market, handmade market, and and so um um she was sharing that Etsy has a a handmade book cover, which is exactly something that she does, and the book cover was selling for almost a thousand ringgit for the same thing that she's doing. So maybe you wanna send your interns that way. <laughs> Go set up an Etsy yeah, account and then you try to sell some handmade stuff there, right? Yeah, exactly. Just you purchase a higher price, kan? Yeah, I think... I yeah, think and the thing with Shopee is that we actually spend so much time looking for the best deals, which essentially means the cheapest thing you can find, right? And a lot of things you can buy on Shopee that is under one ringgit. So there's no way we can compete with that, lah, you know? I pay the local markets more than that, you know, for workmanship. Exactly. So yeah. Because we need to be fair. I, I yeah. think that's something so, that we didn't cover lah. Like, your your enabling oh, of right, your local, right. yeah. your local. Never mind like, next time. Yeah. All right. We'll do it another time. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank, thank you, you, guys. Thank you, uh, we still got five good viewers. Good night. Bye. Bye. -bye.